Hey guys, Kyle Bohannon here with another episode of the Art of Physical Fitness show. So today I had a question addressed to me via Facebook from an old high school buddy. I had posted a workout of mine recently and he was asking how I came about choosing the weights that I had chosen. Now I'm not going to get into the details of how actually of the weights I used or the workout I did. That's unimportant for, the, for what I want to address today. But I do want to address the main idea behind what my answer was to him. So. A lot of people may have that problem when they go into the gym and perhaps you have this, you deal with this, and that they don't know what weight to use. They, do I need to go lighter? Should I go heavier? It, there's no exact system set in place for them to follow for them to know what's good for them. And in this case, sometimes people will go too light not, and it's not heavy enough to produce a response. But they're also sometimes they go too heavy on the other side of the equation and end up injuring themselves or just impairing the recovery, just beating themselves down where they feel like they're on the verge of death for the next couple weeks. I've actually, that can actually happen, I've done that before myself and at that point, especially on an exercise like deadlifts, where if you push it too much, deadlifts are a very sensitive exercise on your nervous system, where if you push it too much, you are going to be drained for a couple of weeks. So it's highly important that you learn how to adjust your weight and how to choose a weight properly based on what you need. So with that said, common programs, I mean, they might have just weights that here, do this weight. Or it might be something that's very similar, is a percentage-based program. Now, percentage-based program have their merit. It follows progressive goal, people are getting heavier and heavier over time with the weight, which is great, but the problem is, is it doesn't take into account your recovery ability. So obviously you have a lot of issues probably in your life. You have work issues, financial might maybe, relationship, not enough sleep, missing meals, just things come up where it negatively impacts your recovery ability. It, I like to look at it this way. Say you come in and you have a training session right here. Oh, you hit this all-time peak, best effort lift, and you're like, oh, I'm on top of the world, everything's awesome. But because of how intense that training session was, combined with all the distractions in your daily life, your recovery ability, you're, you're not at 100% when you come back to it. And all of a sudden, you go from this high peak, highest that you've ever done, and now you come in the next session, and you're lifting way down here, and now you're questioning. What, what the heck went wrong? Why am I not up here? Or you might have just went, gone ahead and go up here and try to lift that same weight or even more when your recovery ability is down here. And now on this, since you're not ready for it, you're probably hurting yourself or just draining your ability to do anything, recover. And a lot of times the worst consequences that I have come into when I've gotten ignorant of this and kind of instead of going with the even flow of life in my body, I would go up here and try and do more than this and I'd miss this, I'd fail on it, and now I, up here, my psyche all of a sudden gets screwed the hell up. I start doubting myself, doubting my program, when it's not the program's fault, it's not me that's at fault, well, in the way it is, but what it is, is I didn't take into account that I wasn't recovered yet. So it's important that you, even when you do hit peaks, that you account for the times when you don't have it. There's always going to be that up and down as you approach. And over time, you'll progress. So like two steps forward, one step back. You're always going to have that one step back. But, the, but as long as you're taking those two step forwards afterwards, now you're making progress. So the way to classify this, I like to classify this, is on a simple 1 to 10 scale or on a word-based uh, scale. So as you see up here, we're going to start on the word-based and how they uh, equate to each other. So. If, on 1 to 10, 10 being incredibly hard and 1 being lifting a feather, you would say here, okay, 1 to 3, that range. 1 to 3, I would call very easy. If, you just, if you're doing squats, any lift, and you lift the weight and you're like, you know, that was very easy, you're in that range. You start getting to the 3 and 5 range, you can either say that was about 3 or 5, that's easier for you to kind of process, or if it's easier for you to process words, you might say a 3 to 5, that was easy. And then we start getting into the 5 and 6 intensity level. And that's now that way that should feel kind of easy-ish for you. So it's not an exact science. I mean, these are doesn't sound like it doesn't look very scientific when I'm using words like easy-ish and heavy, heavy-ish. But it actually is highly useful for training the way your body is built and the fluctuations in your life. Just like um, I've quoted it many times, but Bruce Lee says, "Be like water. Be shapeless. Be formless. If you're in a river." What does water do? It doesn't. And it comes upon a rock. It doesn't just crash into the rock and then just stop. The water will go around the rock. So that's what you need to do. You need to go around your obstacles and do what it takes to get around and fluctuate for the changes in your life. So 
like i said, moving on, when you consider it, it was heavy-ish when you put it on your back. You know, it'd be a six to a seven on the one to ten. Then we get to a weight that's heavy. You know, it feels substantial. We're probably around a seven or eight. And then we get into a very heavy or even a maximal effort type feeling. You're around an eight to nine. And then finally, the rare occasion, the Superman Max. When you go in and you just outperform anything you've ever done, and you might have. You might have predicted going in, you know, I might be able to get 10 more pounds than I did last week. Then all of a sudden you throw on and did 25, 30, 40, 50 more pounds. That's what these days are. These Superman, with everything, all your recovery, your nutrition, your sleep, everything, your body, nervous system, your muscular system, everything is just charged up and ready and perfectly in sync. That's when these times come around. But the problem is too many people judge their training based on this. So going back before, if we're talking about a percentage-based program and you've judged your percent based on this type of max, your Superman max, what do you think it's gonna, you're not gonna be at that 110% um, recovery level all the time. So you're gonna go off these numbers and now you might choose to do, I'm gonna do 85%, but 85% of what your very heavy max would be, which is I would say is kind of a more reasonable, even your heavy max is a more reasonable number to go with if you're going with a percentage-based program. But if you go 90% of the super heavy max and you're asking yourself to do, or 85% and you're asking yourself to do five reps, that number might have actually only been, might be your very heavy max. So you'll get in there and put it on your back and you, on a certain day when you're not on that high, you're down here now, and all of a sudden you're gonna put it on your back, expect to get five, and you'll get one. Now you'll be crushed mentally and physically. So. That's how you can break it down just in your mind. You start putting the weight on your back. How you can judge, is this right, is this heavy, is this light, what you should go with. And then where to go with, as you see, I, I'm a big believer to not train near that top very often. I want you to be able to, especially if your life is hectic, and with athletes, you have sport play, so you can't, your recovery's already gonna be dead from your act, from your technical practice, and you don't wanna be further debilitating energy away from weight training when the important energy needs to be put towards sport practice. So, I am a big believer that you need to spend about 90% of your training time, whether you wanna calculate it actually by weeks, days, months, or just by reps and volume and sets, which I think would be a little, a little better idea. Spend 90% 90 of your time between five and eight on a one to 10, or easiest to heavy. Spend your time there and working, and you'll get stronger, you'll improve your strength, while also not killing your recovery. And then about nine to 10% of your time, get to that very heavy, kind of max-ish area of eight to nine when you're lifting the weight. When you feel like, if I did one more, you know, it would be an absolute grind. It would just be, I would just, it would take me, a, an hour it seems to actually move the weight up. And then finally, with the Superman Max, less than 1% of the time. If not, just completely wipe it out and don't even respond to yourself for those days. Now, per se, if, you got, if you're ego driven, you might want to you know, get in there and you just feel it all and you're like, you know what, take advantage of it. Those days are so few and far between that you might want to you know, go ahead and go after it on those days because it's, it's awesome to all of a sudden go in there and lift 50 more pounds than you ever have, even if you know. But you just have to know going forward not to expect that kind of result and that kind of weight lifted as you go forward. Have some, uh, have some uh, hold back in yourself, have some conservatism, conservatism, yeah, uh, in yourself to be able to realize that, yeah, that was awesome, but let's take a step back and realize that I'm actually probably here. So. That's what I had. I hope that answers any questions that you guys have on the subject of how to choose a weight for you to lift with. If you have further questions or any other further questions at all based on any subjects outside of here, we're talking meditation, nutrition, anything like that, there's a link below to ask me a question so that you're it. And if your question, I feel like it can help everyone else, I will post a video response to it just like this on the blog. And until next time, I thank you once again for stopping by the Art of Physical Fitness show. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.